Do you remember when you were young and Christmas was incredibly exciting? I mean, it was one of the most exciting dates in the whole year for me, definitely. I remember, you know, wondering what kind of presents you would get or just just the whole atmosphere of it, you know, being with friends and family and just the whole, the specialness of the event was so exciting. And you'd get up super early. You couldn't, you couldn't get back to sleep in the morning because you were so excited. But somewhere along the way, that went away. You stopped getting up early. You stopped being that enthusiastic. You stopped wondering what you were going to get for Christmas. You stopped being that enthusiastic or interested or impressed or it didn't really seem to hit nearly as hard. You know, the, the impact didn't hit you nearly as much when you actually got those presents. You know, somewhere along the way, that specialness went away. Christmas Day started to feel like every other day. That's right. Christmas Day was just another day. And I've also noticed that that same kind of thing has happened across the board. You know, like growing up, me and other younger people would be incredibly excited about, you know, upcoming movies or video games or you know, some people would be incredibly enthusiastic about music. They'd be so excited. You know, oh my God, this new album's coming out. Or, oh my God, I cannot wait for this movie. It's going to be amazing. Or, oh, this, this game's coming out. Or, or the game has come out and I can't stop playing it because it's so engrossing. And I, I just yeah. can't, I can't stop because I'm so interested in it. But then later on, you know, you, you can't find that same interest in anything anymore. Nothing seems to interest you like it used to. Even the things that you used to find interesting don't capture you in the same yeah. way anymore. There seems to be something that happens or at least happens to people today where they sort of lose their ability to emotionally respond to the events in their life, whether it be, you know, a new product that they got, like a game or what's the equivalent when you're an adult, or whether it's Christmas Day or even your birthday or, or something. Um, but, but, but not even like those kinds of big special events, but just, you know, going throughout your day-to-day -day life, um, you know, it, you're, you're excited on a Saturday morning because you're going shopping that day or you're, uh, you've got a, you've got a special date that night. It's, it's a first date. Uh, there, there seems to be this loss of the ability for people to feel on some kind of deep level, um, or on a deep level. <laughs> uh, and it's causing people to, the, the, or I guess what you could call this, just some, this emotional stagnation. Um, and that's a problem today. Well, what pe people are, are feeling stuck and they're settling for what's comfortable. And. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, they, they, I, I, I think, I think there's, the one part of the issue is people, they, they don't know how to turn that back on within themselves. Um, yeah, and, I often hear people sort of wish for that. I mean, I hear a lot of right. people say, you know, oh, I wish I was young again because, you know, I could go out in the forest with my friends and, you know, we could play with sticks and that would be like the greatest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least you know, people I grew up with, you know, we'd go out and use them as swords or whatever. But it would be they could find excitement in the smallest things. And I think, I think I, I've heard that a lot, a, a kind of general yearning for excitement in anything. You know, they, they yearn for some kind of interest or excitement in something and, mm -hmm. and they don't know how to turn that back on. So yeah, you're, 
you're definitely right. Yeah, I I think I think we're kind of jumping the gun a little bit and talking about how to turn it back on. Um, I think the first thing we should ask is like, is this something that's inevitable? Like, is this just what happens to adults? Like, do we are we destined yeah, to just emotionally stagnate and and be bored for the rest of our lives? Or is this something that has been killed within us somehow and that there's actually a process where we can turn this back on within ourselves and start living a rewarding, emotionally fulfilling life again? Um, and I mean, it's it seems kind of goofy and naive to talk about um like the childhood imagination um, that we once had um, and like, Oh, or do we just want to be children again? Um, and I, I think that's also something we should talk about. Cause I, I don't, I don't think that's exactly what we're going for is, is we want to be children again, but we, we want to feel again. Is, I mean, how would you, how would you talk about that? Eric? No, I, I think that's a really good point is, Often we hear people say that it's inevitable that when you get older, you just, you know, things stop becoming special because you've experienced them. You've experienced them many times. You know, you, I, if this is, you know, my 20th Christmas because I'm 20 years old. Of course, it's not going to be as special as when I was six. It's not going to have that same kind of quality. But that's that's the real question is. Is it inevitable that you will not feel, you know, any the have any kind of attachment, emotional response to any kind of events in your life going forward when you get older? Yeah, and I, I think I think this attitude is is really ingrained in people today that that it is inevitable. Um, yeah, uh, I was. Um, I was talking with a girl um, that I had I had just met that night. I was out with some friends and I was asking her, you know, what she was interested in life. What were her passions? What was she crazy about? What did she want to do? Um, and <laughs> you will not believe the answer. Do, do you want to guess? I, I'm not sure if I can <laughs> guess, Jonathan. <laughs> She said that she is scared of the people that do have passions, that, that the, the fact that people do have passions is something to be wary of, that it's something dangerous. Um, and that, that just sort of took me aback. I, uh, it, but, it, but it, it made me think that the your passions are your you know your emotional your intense emotional responses to things and if that's something that you're scared of then that's something that you're turning off within yourself and you're never going to be able to feel <laughs> anything special if you're if you're shutting that down within yourself like that if, if you hold that kind of conviction um yeah, that's a really good observation. And if you think about it, I mean, the way people talk about, you know, people like, you know, any any extremist movement, you know, just the term extremist, you know, that I think you can hear the way that they talk about it. It's almost as if these people take these ideas seriously, like they care about, they care about right and wrong so much that they're willing to blow things up and kill people and go to war whereas you know if they didn't care so much they 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 wouldn't bother fighting anyone about it they wouldn't bother killing people over it because it wouldn't they wouldn't take it so seriously because they wouldn't care so much so you know caring just leads to yeah, leads to makes, issues yeah that makes caring seem scary uh, yeah well i i guess what we're here today to say is it, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> uh, um, in, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Caring and having passion and having those intense emotional responses are kind of what makes life worth living. 
And I mean, given the problem that people are facing today, this sort of stagnation, this, this emotional stagnation that people are going through day to day, um, day after day, just being bored and trapped and stuck. Um, what are some solutions for people to get out of that kind of rut? Like, what can people start doing to, to work toward sort of re-engaging these, these dusty gears that they've um, let, let go over the, the years that, that have gone by for them? Well, something I was actually thinking about today, actually, was when you're, when you're dealing with a kind of a, a thought process or a, a pattern of thinking that you, you don't want to have anymore, you know, if you're dealing with depression or anxiety or this kind of stagnant or apathetic quality toward life, you know, that's a, that's a way of thinking that you don't want anymore. And, and oftentimes when people approach this kind of, uh, when, when people often approach situations like, well, I don't want to be depressed anymore, they often think of it as like, oh, I just need to think happy thoughts now, or think this, or think that, or change this thought. But I, I think thinking of it in terms of lifestyle, not just thinking, but of, but of lifestyle is extraordinarily helpful. Because yeah, what agree. that's doing is it's switching it from, oh, I just need to, you know, read a book and oh, don't have this thought anymore and have this thought instead. But rather, what is it in my life that's garnering this kind of thought in me? Mm -hmm. What's in my life that's creating this way of thinking that I need to get rid of? What do I need to change in my life to get rid of this kind of depressive mindset? or this kind of anxious mindset, or this kind of apathetic, dead feeling that I have? How do I, what do I change in my life? Maybe I need to, you know, watch different movies, listen to different music, <laughs> be around different people, right. uh, sit up straight. I mean, even the simplest stuff like that can have a huge impact on how you approach the world, how you feel about yourself. Yeah, one of, uh, one of my favorite analogies, um, that goes with this is um because because what we're what you really want to do is change your your mindset um your your attitude toward life and an analogy that goes hand in hand with that is um changing your body such as like going to the gym or dieting um and just like you were saying with changing your mindset, it come, there comes a change in life. There needs to come a change in lifestyle. Um, the same is true with your body. You know, you, if you want to get in shape or if you want to lose weight or whatever it is, your goal, whatever your goal is, you have to reorient your lifestyle. So you're going to have to eat different every day. You're going to have to uh, make sure you're doing your workouts every day and all, all of that you know, you, you have to build all of those things into your day-to-day -day activities. Um, and just like, you know, your body is made up of muscles, you know, your brain, you could think of as a muscle too. In fact, it might actually be, I, I'm not a biologist. But. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, but go you know, on. <laughs> it was neurons or whatever. Um, and you, you have to, you have to train your brain um, just like you have to train your body. Um, so I think if, if you see it that way, as it's, it's this lifestyle change that has to happen. Um, and just like you have to start eating the, the salads and going to the gym. So you have to start, um, reorienting your emotional environment, you know, in your life to, uh, to get better and start encouraging emotional functioning again. Are there, uh, I guess, are there specific things we can do to, to work toward that era? Or what were you gonna yeah, say? Yeah, there are a lot of things you can do to start breaking this pattern, but I think something that's really important 
to reawakening your your interest in things is to discover just that. What are you interested in? And doing something like sitting down, you know, draft just drafting a, a list of things of like, what do I find neat? And and or just like what's what, very important what, here. What gets and, me excited? Exactly. What's what is what is exciting? What is interesting? It could be, you know, geology or it, it could be anything. Just write it down. It's not a practical list of jobs or something, you know, things you could do as a job. It's just anything that gets you excited, anything that gets you interesting. But what's difficult here is you're dealing with a kind of repression because it, that's really what this sort of dulled sort of blanket over your fire, your internal fire that, that drives you. It's, it's sort of a deadening of, of your drive. And that, that's a kind of repression. And in, in order to get through that, you're going to have to, you're going to be feeling like, oh, this is silly. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. You know, writing silly down, point. you know, I'm, I'm interested in this. Oh, that's silly. You know, what could you do with that? Or so what? You know, you're going to have these thoughts and the, and the, it's going to be difficult getting through those, those thoughts of this is ridiculous or silly. But the key is, to sort of fixate on what is interesting to you and to go with with one thing, not to overwhelm yourself, but like, you know, if you if you write down like something that has to do with outdoors, you know, tr maybe try and find some time to go outside more. You know, go, go for a walk, with, you know, every other day or something like that, go get outside. Or if you find yourself, you know, I like to paint, you know, get, get yourself into to painting even if it's digitally. Um, and there's all sorts of little things you can do, even if it's just research, you know, I'm interested in history. Well, then start looking up, you know, YouTube videos on, on some historical context that you're interested in. It's just something to fill, start filling your life with things that actually interest you and get you going and make you like, oh yeah, I, I wanna do that. And that's really the key is you're trying to get that little I want to come out, to come out easily. And yeah, you wanna you wanna feed that fire. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you want because that's that's what that fire is that drives you, is the the I want deep down inside of you. I want this, I want that. Yeah. And uh yeah, the the list, making a list of things that you uh, that you like, that you are interested in, that, that gets you excited, um, whether I mean, it's cooking, whether it's, uh, like you said, the outdoors, swimming, what, whatever it is. Um, yeah. A as you start to uncover those things, you're going to start to pull off that, that blanket of, of repression. <laughs> and, and, um, but also a, a, another way to, to really help with this, I think is, is to start, um, journaling uh, to yourself um, just every night just let your pen run and the first thing that comes to your head just start talking about your day or or what it's something that happened or maybe a thought you had that day that you want to pursue um, just let your I guess your your sort of subconscious run wild in the journal um, and you'll start to understand yourself better maybe you don't know what it is that you like and as you journal, something will come out, <clears throat> excuse me, something will come out and you'll, you'll hear, uh, you, you'll see, I <laughs> guess you'll read it on the paper that this is something I'm interested in. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's also something you can, you can go after. Um, so, so yeah, start starting to turn, turn on within yourself this idea or the, the feeling um, that you care about things, that there are certain things out there that you value, that you love. Um, that's, I, I think that's the key to, to, to getting yourself um, back onto emotional track, so to speak. Um, yeah. And, yeah, um, give, and not, give and, well, examples. Oh, go ahead. Just, just one more point, but not, not being afraid of that feeling too. Um, 
of, of yeah. caring because because there's going to be people out there that are going to tell you that's stupid. Um, and, and you're going to even feel like, oh, what's the point of this? Um, and, and you shouldn't be intimidated or afraid of those feelings. Um, you, should, you should pursue what you value, um, what, you, what, what you've uncovered that you care about. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because you're, you're definitely going to encounter sort of a stigma or, or really just, just an, a, a general awkwardness of like, why do you care so much? You know, why does it matter yeah. so much? Like the, like the girl I talked to, you know, you're going to encounter people like her who are afraid of you. Yeah. For caring. Yeah, that, that your passion will, your, your interest in something will be uncomfortable for them because for them, you know, they've, they've repressed all that stuff. And being in front of someone who's trying to unrepress it is, you know, whatever. Yeah. Why are you doing that? What's that about? What's the point of that? But also, um, in the, in addition to that, yeah, just just to give an example of what what it is we're we're talking about is, you know, for instance, myself, like I I, uh, you know, I I took an interest into in cooking a while ago, and I just started cooking. It was out of necessity, really, but. But I didn't have to put in, uh, thought into it. I didn't have to research, you know, recipes or try and figure out what is this person, what is this person doing uh, differently that I'm doing that I could start implementing. And you know, just little by little, I started accumulating, you know, understanding of this and understanding that, and you know, looking into these ingredients and these recipes, and yeah, you know, over over time. I eventually became more and more confident and competent in the in the kitchen, and I was able to actually grow to enjoy enjoy cooking and finding finding it creative and and interesting. Uh, same with baking and you know, just little things like that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just just the little things that can get you interested, you know, to, to fill your day with, to give you options to do. Because I think that's really the feeling of most people have today, sort of that depressive feeling of there's really nothing to do. Yeah, because people say, oh, you've got so many options. You've got the internet, you've got all these, you know, the books and movies and music, you know, all this stuff to consume. But it doesn't really feel that way when you, uh, most people don't really feel that way. They don't feel like they have tons of options, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think primarily it's because they're stuck in this dead zone of, of not, not indulging in their interests, not following mm -hmm. their, their wants, their passions. Yeah, I, I think there's, um... There's one danger that people should look out for um, when it comes to this kind of advice. Because um, I, I hear people a lot when I talk to them about this say that they are pursuing their interests, um, that they, they are going after what they want. And if I push them on it a little bit, um, it turns out that the things they're going after are not exactly their particular interest, but rather something that they feel they owe someone else. Maybe it's their parents that they need to live up to uh, a certain demand that they felt was coming from their parents or, or that they need to help others, that that's part of what their life is about. Um, and I think it's really important when you're making your list and journaling about yourself that you're really thinking about what it is that you want out of life, not what you owe anyone else or what others expect of you. Uh, I, it, 
if there's <laughs> that's that's definitely one thing that will kill this in you if, is if you're repressing what you want because you you feel that you need to do something else for someone else. Can you give us some examples? Well, I mean, I can I can give a personal example. Um, I mean, when I when I was going through college, I um, was a business major for a long time, feeling that that's what um, I should do. Not a, not not because it was something that I wanted to do, but that was just you know like this is something that's going to be important for me to do. I should do this. Is what my parents will be proud. Um, I'm going to be able to get a job like there's this is this is just the right thing to do, even though I had absolutely no interest in, in business at all. Um, that that wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, and and those kinds of pressures can can weigh on you. Um, I eventually changed my major, but um, but it's it's stuff like that. It sneaks in. You it sometimes you you can deceive yourself. Um, but I I've had people tell me um, that the the whole reason they were going into a certain business um, or or a certain endeavor was because they wanted their dad to feel proud, and that they they that it would prove to him that they were capable and. It, that that's not really a valid um a valid reason to do anything uh, and of course you you do have to weigh like can i make money at this like if, if it is a career interest can is this something i want to make money doing how could i make money doing this and, and those are questions to think about but um but the key is what what do i want I sort of took us on a career tangent there, but that's all right. This applies to everything in life. Yeah. Um, so, how would we wrap up what we've what we've talked about? How would we how would we summarize it? Well, um, if you are someone that feels, um, I guess the simplest way to put it would be bored um, with day-to-day -day life. If you're feeling the, sa the sameness of each day go by, you're stuck, you don't feel excited about particular events or things you're going to do, um, then the, the solution is to, <laughs> I mean, this is a summary, um, the solution is to start uncovering within yourself the things that do interest you and start doing them. And that's something that you have to work toward. Um, and it's going to take a long time. Um, maybe not a long time, but it, it's going to take time. Um, I mean, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I was just thinking like, yeah, just to conclude, like it's, it's really the, the things that that make us interested the things that that really light us up and get us excited those are the things that really make our life you know it, it makes it worth living and when you look back and in, in, in on your life all those little moments where you were excited i mean for instance you know all those moments when you were a kid and you were excited about a movie or a video game or a present, you know, Christmas or whatever it is, you were excited and you remember that and you yearn for that. Or, you know, when you'd go and play with your friends and, you know, the, you just have a, a stick and that would, you'd have this unbelievable time playing some game just with your imaginations. You know, you remember it because you were excited and you were passionate, you were interested. Um, yeah. And that's really what makes your life worth living. Where it, I mean, if you can imagine it, living, you know, you're trying to get to a place where your, your life is like that, you know, where you're deeply interested in what it is that you're doing. And you're going to feel, I, you're going to feel that I want to live because I'm doing what I want to do every day. Mm -hmm. And that's really what life is about. So when people, when people come to you and tell you like, oh, you know, life 
Life is meaningless. They're just in that state. That's all they're saying is I'm just in this gray, bored state. And I'm, and that's the feeling state they're in. And if you're sick of that feeling, this is the way out. This is the way to, to cure that. Discover what drives you. Discover your passions. Well, and the whole point of Helios really is to address this topic. So if, um, you know, we're going to continue coming out with content that helps you with this, um, we're developing courses. Um, we're, uh, what else are we doing, Eric? 